break. Uh, and let's welcome Alexis Jacob. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me good? Uh, uh, yes, you sound perfect. Uh, you're the CTO of Numberly and can be found on the internet, f just as a warning ahead, as Ultrabug. <laughs> so that's an interesting <laughs> name. <laughs> yeah. But I don't want to break your concentration now because you're going to tell us something about static documentation. Yeah. And so let's uh, start your screen share now and I'll leave the stage to you. Thank you very much, Martin. Hello, everyone. I'm very pleased to be with you today. And uh, yeah, uh, as Martin said, I'm the person between uh, standing between you and the lunch break. So I'll, I'll, I promise I'll be on time. Um, today, I'm going to explain and demonstrate how to generate a static documentation or website that supports multiple language um, using MKDocs and GitHub. When I switched my own website uh, from WordPress to MKDocs, I wanted to support multiple languages of it, but I found nothing but ancient uh, MKDocs issues uh, asking for it. And you'll be surprised to know that um, this feature has been wished by the MKDocs community since 2015. And I hope uh, that this talk will uh, equivalently uh, surprise you. Um, in uh, demonstrating how simple we've made it uh, to achieve 2021. I'm super happy to have uh, worked in uh, making this a reality for the community. So let's start. Um, as you can already judge by my accent, I'm, um, I'm French and I'm from Paris. Um, my name is Alexis. I'm CTO at Numberly, just like Martin said. Um, so you spoiled it a bit for me, uh, Martin. Um, I'm engaged with uh, mostly Python-based projects and communities. I'm a PSF contributing member as, as such. I'm the author of uh, various uh, open source uh, uh, projects, uh, such as one that uh, I will be talking about today. Uh, I'm an MKDocs contributor and maintainer as well. Uh, all this work made me a maintainer of MKDocs. Maybe I got a bit too much involved there. Um, I've been a Gentoo Linux developer as well for more than 10 years now, where I work on packaging cluster or distributed databases uh, related stuff. And I'm also uh, part of the people that are maintaining the Gentoo Docker uh, containers. I like to share uh, my uh, uh, experience and production experience uh, during tech conferences uh, such as EuroPython for many years now, um, uh, with tech webinars, blog posts on my on my website that is linked below. Um, and yes, just like Martin said, you can find me about everywhere as Ultrabug. So uh, let's start by introducing the different components uh, that we'll be using uh, to achieve our goal today. And the first one is obviously related to the documentation engine, which uh, uh, is MKDocs, that is, uh, has been created in 2014 by Tom Christie. Uh, the idea is using a very simple YAML file to configure your site, MKDocs will generate a static uh, site out of plain text files formatted using the lightweight um, markup language called Markdown. Speed and simplicity were uh, the key drivers of the MKDocs development, and that explains, I think, why it became so popular. Um, MKDocs writ is written in Python, the core itself, though you don't have to use any Python at all if you want to use it. Um, but um, I'm just saying this because its source code is really easy to understand and uh, we are open to contributions. So feel free to look into it if you want to. I've put, on, I've put down some links to some markdown guides and tutorials if you want to, to, to learn um, more about uh, the, the markdown uh, markup language. Then uh, MKDoc sites can be teamed. And while it comes with two built-in teams, uh, their look and feel is a bit dated um, and their customization is limited. Uh, MKDocs Material is by far the most popular team for MKDocs as it is based on applying the material design principles to MKDocs uh, generated sites. It is very customizable, searchable, mobile friendly, supports uh, uh, multiple languages uh, also. 
Um, and in case you didn't know, Material is an open source design system from Google uh, that helps uh, teams build high quality digital experiences. Uh, it defines guidelines, layouts, colors, typography and components for teaming websites, mobile applications and more. So I've put on the link as well uh, if you want to, to check it out. Now let's talk about supporting multiple language uh, of our documentation or website. And supporting multiple languages is, uh, is called internationalization or localization or actually it depends who you ask. And before bringing multiple languages support to MKDocs, I must confess that I never gave a thought about this. So I, I, I was quite amazed to see how this question could generate, in, degenerate in a, in a flame war. Um, I don't even know how to pronounce those I18N or L10N acronyms. Uh, I, I think you just write them down, to be honest. Uh, what I learned along the way is uh, that the 18 in I18N stands for the number of letters between the first and I and the last N in the world internationalization. And uh, the same goes for uh, the localization and that, that's where the L10N come from. So as a disclaimer, choose your side at your own risk. I will just explain our reasoning for MKDocs. Please do not shoot the messenger. I, I even put a, a, a nice kitten on the slide to, to increase my chance of survival. Um, anyway, after debating this question, we agreed that the core feature that we were developing to allow users to localize their content should be called interna internationalization. Um, it took me two months uh, of work and uh, uh, 175 commits, uh, comments sorry, to get the feature into uh, MKDOX, not to agree on, uh, on the internalization term, don't worry. And now in um, MKDOX internalization feature applies to, it's, it's important to note that it applies only to team translatable texts such as the search dialogues, uh, not, not the documentation content or website actual content, though it could be extended further since it's based on Babel, if you wish to. But to translate the actual content text of, uh, of the documentation, you need the uh, MKDOC static uh, internalization plugin. I wrote this plugin in the same spirit uh, of uh, MKDocs. It aims at making the translation of your documentation and website as fast and simple as possible. I hope that by the end of the talk, I will uh, have convinced you uh, of this statement. The idea is that you create a static and localized version of any file in your project, be it markdown pages or even images and assets. And the plugin will generate a version of your documentation site for every language you define and localize. The, localize, the, lo the localized version of your documentation will be made available using a slash suffix on your URL uh, path, but I will detail and demonstrate every, everything soon anyway. I was happy that it quickly got adopted by a, a, a few uh, uh, cool projects such as uh, Spaceship Prompt and uh, WS is using it as well for uh, their Copilot CLI uh, documentation. Now, let's get to the hosting side, uh, side of our site and it will be GitHub. And GitHub offers the GitHub Pages uh, feature to build and host static project sites directly from a GitHub repository. This is very convenient and very powerful when combined with the simplicity of MKDocs. So you get one site uh, for your GitHub account, organization, and for every repository or project you have, you will get a, a, a website URL uh, for you with HTTPS, and you can even set your own custom domains on it. So it's very, very useful. There are, of course, some limitations, but I think they are high and a good match for the kind of uh, static website we're talking about. And of course, you should not abuse GitHub's goodwill and try to host dynamic business powering websites uh, using GitHub pages, because wh while you will get a gentle message from them if you exceed the soft limits, they might not be so gentle uh, if they feel abused. Okay, now that love is in the air, 
let's get started. Everything I'm going to show you is part of the GitHub repository listed here. Uh, the repository contains a branch for every step that I will be taking and demonstrating afterwards. So we'll need a clone or a fork uh, of it. Then we need to set up a virtual environment created as shown. Of course, Python 2 is out of the scope and not supported by MKDOX anymore. Um, the rest of the presentation includes GIF video captures of every step taken, just like a live demonstration. But if you want to follow along and try it yourself during the talk, be my guest. On the top right corner of uh, the following slides, a recap image will be there with everything you need to, to uh, catch up. So don't freak out if you missed a step, a step and have fun. Uh, also, a web version of the presentation is available on my website, including the demo GIFs, etc. So you can always find your way through afterwards uh, without having to look at YouTube or a PDF. You have it all. Let's get down to the requirements. Uh, obviously, we need MKDOX. We recently released version 1.2.2, so I'm basing this talk on the latest version at this time. We won't need the actual internalization um, uh, option of MKDOX itself, since we will not be using the default teams. We will be using MKDOX material, will, which comes with its own support for uh, uh, dialogues and, and, and elements uh, uh, localization. Then we obviously need uh, MKDOX static uh, internalization plugin um, to allow us to uh, localize and translate the actual content that we are going to talk about. Let's look at the steps that we are going to take uh, to get our localized MKDOX project site live on the internet, thanks to GitHub pages. I'll be detailing every step, but let me run it down for you now. First thing we are going to do is initialize our project using the MKDOX new uh, command. Then we will build and serve the, the, the site locally so we can preview it and in our own browser. And for this, we are going to use the mkdocs serve command. Then we are going to start modifying the content, adding assets, and localize our website. And while we do this, the mkdocs serve will reload, detect the changes, and reload our local version and preview of the website uh, immediately. So we will be able to, to, to actually see the result of our changes live. When we will be done, uh, we will commit and push the changes to, to the GitHub repo. which And then we will deploy our site to GitHub pages using the mkdocs github deploy command. And that's all. Our localized website will be online. Now, let's start. We initialize our mkdocs project. We use the mkdocs new dot inside the, the, the repository. It will create two files. Uh, the first one is mkdocs uh, yaml configuration file. And then it will create a folder with an initial index.markdown file uh, that will serve as our home page. You can see that uh, on the little images thumbnails, um, I will highlight the things that are important to see uh, in, in, in red. So here we see that using this command, it created the two files. Great. Now we are going to, uh, testing and previewing is very handy and comfortable when working on a, on a website project. So MKDOC serve gives us the, what you see is what you get feeling uh, that we are looking for. Um, so it will build, run a local server, so you can open the, the given URL on the port uh, 8000, and you, your browser will display the, the, the rendering of the index that, uh, that uh, markdown that uh, was created in the step before. So you will get presented the default MKDOX website in your browser. Now let's demonstrate how Live Reload works by changing the site name. So here you see that we have uh, the, the file directory structure that I just explained. I'm going to run mkdocs serve. My website is ready. 
you see that the the, the, theme, the name is uh, is highlighted. Then I'm going to change on the mkdocs YAML uh, configuration file file the site name. When I write and save this file, the mkdoc serve will pick up the change and automatically reload. And you can see that the title in our browser has just changed. It's as simple as that. Change detection applies to both the mkdocs YAML configuration file and all the files in the docs folder. Now let's switch to um, uh, the default odd looking mkdocs team to the nice material team. So I run again mkdocs serve and then I'm going to change uh, the mkdocs YAML configuration file. I'm going to write team, name, material, and I'm, I'm just going to save this. And once again, the build will pick up. It will rebuild and switch to the team, the material team, which is very and better looking, as you can see. Two lines in the mkdocs YAML configuration file, and we are done. Let's go one step further. Now, uh, since material is highly customizable, we want to switch the color of our website to Europython's green color. So I'm going to run mkdocs serve, and then now I'm going to add the um, change the palette primary switch to green. Once again, I save the, markdown, the, the mkdocs YAML file and our website just changed to green. Once again, two lines. Cool. Now we want to add an image asset and display the EuroPython logo on our home page. So for this, I created an assets folder. I put the PNG of the EuroPython logo in it, as you can see. And then I'm going to modify this time the index.markdown file uh, and add a reference and ask to display the image. So I write down EuroPython 2021logo.png. I'm going to save this, of course. And then I'm going to run mkdoc serve so that it builds and refresh my browser. And when I do, you will see that the image appears in our website. So we just put up an image asset now in our home page. Cool. Now let's start localizing our content. Um, we know how to change the team. We know how to add an asset. It was fairly easy. And now we want to translate the actual content. And here comes mkdocs static um, internalization plugin. This plugin will create, as I said, the slash language version path at the end of, our, of your website URL for each language you configure. It requires a default language and a list of all the language you need, a version of your site of with their display name. So here, for example, in the, in, in the configuration, we list the EN and FR languages, so English and French languages, and we configure the EN language and English uh, as the default version. It means that the default URL will be English. If you go on your website, usually the root slash will be the English version. If you append the slash en site uh, to, the, to your URL path, you will also get the English version. So they will be the same, actually. Um, and But if you switch to the slash fr um, uh, path, you will be on the French version of the website. What is also very cool is that the plugin will take care of configuring a few things automatically for us, and it will be very handy. The first thing that it will configure is the search plugin. Um, it will make sure that the, the search plugin is um, it builds its search index um, in a localized way as well. So when you are on the French slash FR version of the website and you start looking and searching for something, you will get the French result and not the English one. So it contextualizes the search for you. It will also adapt automatically the material theme language. So if you're using material theme, it will switch um, on the slash FR uh, French version, you will get the French uh, um, dialogues uh, of, of, this, of, this, of the material team. 
And it will also configure the material team language switcher. It will have a language switcher in the header of the website, so you can easily switch between English and French. Now it's time to work and translate our website content. Um, so the way it works is that uh, MKDOX static um, internalization plugin detects the localized version of any file from their language suffix and extension. So we localize the version of pages and assets by suffixing them with dot language dot the extension of what you're uh, doing. So in, in our case, we want to um, to localize the home page. So the home page was index.md. So we are going to rename this index.md to index.en.md since it's the default and English uh, language. And then we are going to add another file, index.fr.md, for the French version. You can see it as well uh, on, on, the, on, the, on the directory tree highlighted. It will look like this. Um, in the English version, you get what we had before, EuroPython 2021 homepage, and everything is written in English, obviously. And you do the counterpart in French. Um, if you don't know French, believe me, it's French. Um, index.fr, this time, .md. And that's all there is to it. So let's demonstrate it live. So we had this website. So now I'm, we, I'm going to show you that in the directory structure now, in the, instead of having index.md, I have index.en.md and the French one as well. And now I'm going to start configuring the plugin. I'm going to ask for the search plugin. I'm going to load the internalization plugin, set the default language to English, and then define the languages I want a version for. English will be named English, and FR will be named French, uh, Francais, sorry. I write this uh, mkdocs YAML configuration file, and then I just run mkdocs serve. And here you can see that immediately the page has been refreshed. I see my title, and then I see the language switcher that has been configured for me. If I go on the English version, I go, I see this. If I go on the slash en, I still see the same as the default version since they are both English. Now, if I switch to French, I see the actual content of the French. I see the dialogues of the team has been switched as well to uh, their French, the French language. So everything was done automatically for me for the by the the static uh, uh, plugin. And that's all. But now let's go one step further. What if I wanted to localize the assets? of our documentation site uh, in the French markdown source of an image, we would have to reference the French version of the image, right? Um, and the same goes for internal page links. French pages would need to link and reference French suffixed versions of our pages. This would make translating content slower and cumbersome, even more uh, when we add or remove new links and assets every page would need to be updated uh, specifically. But fear not, the MKDOX static uh, loca internalization plugin uh, will automatically use uh, the localized version of any page or assets referenced in your Markdown source without the need of their dot .language suffix. So the way it works is that if we take back our example here, we have the index.en.md and fr.md. They both refer to the same EuroPython logo PNG without its extension. Even though on our directory tree, we have created an English version of the, of the image of the logo and a French version one. MCAD, the, the plugin will detect that when we are on the slash or slash en uh, version, we are we actually want the .en.png version of the logo. And when we will be browsing the slash fr version of the of the of the documentation, we actually want to see the .fr.png. But in the source itself of the markdown pages, we reference the image without its localized uh, language extension. It will be localized automatically. So we can actually focus on translating the actual text and not uh, 
juggling between um, the assets or page link references. We just references re reference them without it. So let's demonstrate let's demonstrate this uh, live. So if I look at my directory tree now in a, in our uh, in a repository, what we can see is yeah I have the, an English version and a French version of the uh, logo. If I look at the source uh, of uh, the Markdown, uh, the English version of the Markdown, I can see that I do not have uh, uh, the .en uh, .png reference. And if I look at the French one, I just have the, their uh, non-localized version. Now, if I do mkdoc serve, it will build this and it will reload uh, the version on the website, on a browser. And as you can see, I'm on the default, meaning English version, and I see the English version of uh, the the web the, the logo. If I go on the slash en, since it's uh, the same, I still see the English version of the logo. But if I now I switch to the French version, I see the French version of the logo. That's it. Uh, we are done, and we have successfully created a website supporting multiple languages using MKDocs. Plus, it has automatically configured um, and, and, and localized the reference of our assets. So it's even easier to do. It has a great look and feel, an intuitive ergonomy, and a cool and localized search engine. It's time we pushed our great work to our repository. So we just add the files that we created. We commit them nicely, and we push them. Uh, to, uh, to our GitHub repository. Once we are done, uh, we want to deploy it so that GitHub Pages starts uh, hosting the, the, the build site. So for this, we use the mkdocs GitHub deploy command, which will uh, go through multiple steps. The first one is to actually build our multi-language website. As you can see, it builds, and then it says building EN documentation, and then the FR documentation. When it's done, the result of a build process is to create a site folder containing all the static uh, elements of our website. And it will copy the site folder to the GitHub Pages branch. Once it's done, it's going to push the GitHub Pages branch to GitHub. That's all. And that's even more all because GitHub Pages will see that and will automatically configure itself. So even you don't even have to configure GitHub pages or go to your repository or anything. Um, as you can see, the source will be the branch GitHub pages. Um, you will get an, a new URL immediately set up for you and with HTTPS. Well done. Our multi-language MKDOX website is online and hosted by GitHub. You can check it out yourself on the on the given uh, URL. And at this time, I, how, I, I know how you feel. You, you feel that it was really too easy. Um, so let me try to make it a bit more complicated now, maybe. Let's say that we want to make a Git, GitHub build and update our website automatically whenever we push new changes to the main branch. For this, we need to create a .github slash workflows slash um, github deploy YAML file and configure it as shown. What it says is that when we push to branch main, execute those jobs. There is actually one job, it's a build. And between the, inside the job, there are different steps. The first step is to check out the, the, the repository. We are going to set up a Python version. We are going to install the requirements, just like we did before on our own virtual environment. And then we are going to instruct GitHub Actions to actually execute mkdocs GitHub deploy for us. That's all. And now, any push we make to the main branch will trigger uh, GitHub Action steps, which will run the mkdocs GitHub deploy command for us, triggering a refresh of GitHub pages and update our website automatically. Um, so I'm sorry, I just I, I, I think I just made everything even more easier than before. 
you just need one file. Let's get down to some resources now that are can be useful to you. The first one is, um, uh, in case you didn't know, uh, there is a MKDocs as a wiki on GitHub uh, where all the plugins uh, are, uh, are are listed. It's community community based, so anyone can add their own plugin there. So if you look for a plugin, a specific thing, start there. And then I wanted to highlight three of the plugins that I I I, I use um, and find very interesting. The first one is a plugin to handle URL redirections. Um, so if you want, yeah, to 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 redirect a special URL to a specific uh, uh, part of your of your um, of your uh, website, you can using uh, using this uh, this uh, plugin. The second one is uh, very useful uh, when you want to be able to control the navigation ordering of your pages um, and even more inside the structure of your page, uh, of your website. So you can have different styles of ordering uh, because if you don't have this, they are sort uh, um, alphabetically. So what if you want reverse? What if you want this one first and then alphabetically, or this one first and this one first and then the rest reverse or alphabetically, etc. It's very, very convenient and handy. So check this one out as well. And the last one is very interesting as well because it allows you to hook your own functions to the build process. So when you, you build or uh, GitHub deploy or whatever, um, you can hook a function that you have defined inside your your code um, um, to uh, to to run. That allows uh, that allows you to, for instance, create dynamic pages that you want included, and you want those pages to be dynamically generated by a function uh, without having to create your own plugin or whatever. So that's a, that's a pretty interesting because every time you build, it will be reloaded, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Very very nice uh, little and simple plugin. On the Markdown extensions side, um, because Markdown is extendable, uh, there are a few ones that I wanted to highlight. The first one is a uh, attribute list. Uh, this one is cool because it allows you to add. Um, brackets after, uh, let's say, an image reference to add some CSS to it. So, what if you want to this uh, this image to look uh, round and uh, of a certain width? You can do it using the attribute list uh, uh, Markdown extension directly in your Markdown. Uh, the second one is uh, called admonition. I don't know why it's called like this, but. Uh, Maybe you do. Um, it will allow you to create nice little boxes like you see and like I, I have uh, displayed here. So when you want to display a nice and good looking disclaimer, note or whatever, you can do it like this using the admonition. It's, uh, it allows you to quickly add it uh, to, your, to your markdown source and renders very nicely. The third one is a, a table of content uh, permalink uh, generator, which add anchors and auto links to um, to the different uh, elements of your table of content. It's very handy. Of course, no website today uh, can be a full website and a real website without nice emojis. So you can have it uh, as well here. Um, and the last one is uh, interesting as well, uh, since it allows you to have a nice uh, task list with good looking checkboxes. So if you are into this, uh, check it out as well. Those extensions I have showcased as well uh, in the repository that I uh, uh, told you about uh, earlier. So if you switch to the extensions branch, you can see uh, a, a demonstration of how they are used. So this is this can be convenient for you if you want to. To, to test them out uh, easily. So check it out there. That's all for me. Um, thank you very much for attending. Uh, you can find me about everywhere as Ultrabug, as I told you earlier. Um, the repository of uh, this talk is uh, linked here, the web version as well. Uh, check them out. Uh, they are, I've made a lot of efforts to make them easy to 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 use and and to to 
to understand. And I wanted also to, to take the opportunity to extend a special thank you to, uh, to the contributors and to the people that have interacted with quite a lot uh, during uh, all the work process and open source and contribution process to make uh, all that I presented to you today uh, available and as, it as easy as it is uh, today. So thank you very much for attending. Have a very, very nice uh, EuroPython 2021. Okay, so uh, thank you very much for this introduction and also for providing both the slides and a GitHub repository so that we can try uh, out all this on our own. We had quite a few questions and uh, let's do a simple one first. And that's from Sebastian. Oh, sorry, I missed. Well, is it possible to use doc strings from the code to generate some docs automatically? And while we were discussing this, uh, Gina was also uh, getting involved in this and she looked it up and had a more specific questions. Like, do you have experience with something like MK Autodoc to generate API docs in MK doc? So the, the answer to Gina is, um, no, I don't have experience with it. Uh, anything that generates Markdown should be in any way uh, readable and usable, uh, even more when they are hooked with the plugin that I, I showed earlier, which can make uh, generating things very easy. So I don't know also about uh, the, the doc string part. Uh, this is pretty uh, uh, usually uh, uh, very common in Sphinx. Um, of course, I'm sure there are tons of things because MKDOX is uh, uh, as, uh, as very widely penetrated the, the, the documentation, hosting and generation of a lot of projects and most likely Python projects, of course. So I'm sure there are a lot of things uh, to, to check out. I guess you get this kind of answer in the MKDOX wiki page, uh, pages uh, where a, a lot of things have, uh, have been discussed um, and are shared. There is also a GitHub discussions on MKDOGS where you can ask your questions. Uh, and I'm sure that uh, those questions have already have an answer waiting for you. Yeah, thanks for that. Uh, you've showed this with GitHub and uh, Dragos asks, does it also work with GitLab or competing Gits? Yeah, uh, I know that um, on GitLab, it it should, though you don't have the mkdocs um, gitlab deploy command. Uh, Bitbucket, I don't know. Uh, I don't know at all because I've never used it, to be honest. Um, but uh, that's some kind of contribution that uh, we would like to see, actually. Uh, uh, mkdocs uh, gl-deploy uh, uh, would, would be cool if there are some specifics about gitlab, at least actually. Uh, the code of MKDOX should be should be able to easily support it. So if you are up for the task, please please come please come with it. But uh, de facto, no, it doesn't support it yet. But it, it absolutely can. Okay. Uh, and the final question, the short one: uh, Is it possible to localize the title of a website? Yes. Yes, yes, everything is, uh, you have all those as um, options of on, on the on the MKDOX uh, YAML configuration file. So everything can be, uh, can be, um, can be um, localized. Sorry. Um, this is done through the MKDOX static internalization plugin, which uh, if you go on the README, uh, uh, you, you have a specific section explaining how to uh, add translations for uh, all the elements and all the titles, including, the, uh, including uh, all the navigation titles. So that includes the, the site name, yes. Okay, so that's the question. Now the chat is just filled with applause. So it seems that you have really um, given the audience something that they wanted. Thank you very much for doing the presentation. And I hope you're going to enjoy the rest of the week. And thank you. Um,